I've been teaching convolution for 25 years and I know that students get confused by the flip and shift method. I've got an alternative, it's five easy steps. You won't hear the words flip or shift and you can apply my technique to any convolution problem, no matter how complicated. So let's get started. Here's the equation for convolution. The two input functions are multiplied together and that gives you an output function after you take an integral. So step number one, is to visualize these input functions and plot the functions. I really can't stress this highly enough. So here are two functions that we're going to use as example functions. We're going to do this convolution. And now that we plot them, I want to point out that the function determines the shape. So I can actually change this variable here to anything I like and it doesn't change the function. That's really a critical important thing. So I could cross this one out and I could say u of alpha. And if I plot that as a function of alpha, then it's exactly the same. So u of t plotted as a function of t is that function. u of alpha plotted as a function of alpha is the same function. That might sound obvious, but it's important and it helps to remove confusion later. So likewise, I'm going to call this V of alpha and plot it with respect to alpha. And another thing we want to take note of is that this integral is over the variable tau. So when we plot these functions in here with respect to each other, we need to do it as a function of tau. So that's step two. Step two is to plot these functions underneath each other as a function of tau. So the first function here, u of tau, we're going to be plotting it with respect to tau. So we can do that integral. Well, you can clearly see that it's exactly the same function as the one above. We're just changing from alpha to tau. So this function now is this function here. Now we need to plot underneath it v of t minus tau. So this is v of t minus tau. And this is where step three comes in. So step three is that we need to do this for a particular value of t. So let's pick a value of t. Now I'm gonna pick this value here. It's just a small positive value. Don't forget we're plotting with respect to tau. So I'm picking a value of t. I'm gonna do this convolution for that value of t. And then of course, I'm gonna to have to do it for all the other values of t, but let's just pick this one as an example to get started with. So how do we plot this function here for this value of t? So to do this, I use a technique where I think about the thing in the brackets. Again, this was important to have changed the variable to alpha here, just to make that point. So now here we can see from this graph here, which is our function v, when alpha equals zero, we're gonna be having this transition. Now alpha is the thing in the brackets. And you're gonna hear me use this phrase, the thing in the brackets, quite often. So when the thing in the brackets equals zero, we're gonna get that transition. So here we have the same function, we just need to know where that transition goes to when we're plotting with respect to tau. So let's repeat that, the thing in the brackets, so for our function down here that we want, the thing in the brackets is t minus tau. So when the thing in the brackets, t minus tau, when that equals zero, we're gonna get that transition. So what value of tau is that? How do we plot that on this axis here, which is a function of tau? Okay, so well, we just rearrange this equation. So this implies that tau equals t. Okay, so on this plot here, when tau equals t, we are going to get that transition, this transition here. Let's pick another one. We're just gonna use the same procedure over and over again. So let's pick another point in our function. And we're gonna pick this one. There's another transition, another interesting point. So that's when the thing in the brackets equals one. Okay, so what's the thing in the brackets of the function we want to plot? Well, that's t minus tau. When that equals one, we're gonna get that transition there. Okay, so what value of tau is that? Because we're plotting with respect to tau. Well, again, we just rearrange it and we get tau equals t minus one. Where is that on our plot? Well, that's the t that we chose in step three. So t minus one is going to be here, t minus one. And that's when that transition happens. And we know that in between those two transitions, it's a constant. So we can draw the function that we are interested in, the function that we need 
This is the function that's in the integral that we need to calculate. So that's why we needed to plot these two functions. OK, so what does convolution tell us? It now tells us we need to multiply them together and take the integral. So that is step four. Step four is draw the multiplication of the two functions and find the area because that's what the integral is. So here when we multiply these two together, and this is why we plotted them underneath each other in step two. So now we can multiply them. Well, this function is zero. So when it multiplies by this part of this function, it's gonna give you zero. This function here is zero in here. So when it multiplies by that function there over that range of tau, it's going to be zero. And the only time when it's not zero is going to be between the tau zero and tau t. Okay, so we now have this function here between those. And I, I'm not drawing the amplitudes to scale here, but I think let's say that the amplitude of both of these equals a, just for an, our example. So this equals a, the height here equals a. So now when we multiply them together, the height of this is a squared, and it's between zero and t. And I think hopefully you can clearly see now Plotting with respect to tau, multiplying them together because that's what the equation says to do, the convolution equation, and then finding the area. Well, what's the area of this? In this particular example, it's a rectangle, so it's the base times the height. So the area is going to be a squared t. So this is the area for this particular value of t that I have chosen. Okay, now step five says repeat steps two to four for other values of t. So let's go ahead and do that. At the, risk, at the risk of sort of repeating ourselves too much, I think it's worth doing it so that you can see the repetition and you can see that all of these steps that you have been uh, learning about here are repeatable and straightforward and give you an easy answer in each case. So now we're going to pick a different value of t. Let me pick a value of t that's close up to 2. So now in this case, we're going to do the same steps. We're drawing the functions underneath each other. That was step uh, 2 with this value of t that we've picked, which is step 3. So t minus 1 is going to be here. Again, we are plotting them with respect to tau. And so let's think to ourselves again, let's repeat the arguments again. This is u of tau again, that's the first one here. This is gonna be v of t minus tau again, it's just for a different value of t this time. And so again, we repeat the steps. The thing in the brackets here has this interesting transition when that thing equals zero. So where does that transition go on our new plot for this new value of t that we've got here? Well, when the thing in the brackets equals zero, you get the transition. It's the same equations as over here. The thing in the brackets is still t minus tau. And when that equals zero, you're gonna do it for a tau which equals t. So on this plot here, it's there for this value of t, that transition happens here. Same thing again, same steps. When the thing in the brackets equals one, that's when this interesting transition happens. The thing in the brackets is t minus tau. When that equals one, that's rearrange that, you find tau equals t minus one. t minus one here is here for this new value of t that you've picked. So now the transition happens here. And so the function looks like this for this value of t. Now we do step four again, which says to multiply the functions and find the area. And now we can see that this is zero all along here. It's going to zero out this part of the function here and zero out that part there. And all you're gonna get is the function between t minus one and t. So it's a different function now to the one before because we're doing it for a different value of t. The height is still going to be a squared because this is a and this is a. So you've still got a height of a squared, but now the base goes from t minus one up to t, because the zero from this function for this value of t zeroed out this part of the function. So here now, what's the area here? Well, again, it's the height times the base. So this is a squared, and the base here is of length t minus t minus one, which is of length one. So now the convolution answer for this value of t, the convolution answer is a squared. 
So now let's repeat that again. Again, do step five. We repeat it again for a different value of t. I'm now going to pick a value of t that's bigger than two. And now we can see the two functions that we need to multiply in the integral for this value of t. They overlap over this range from t minus one up to two because anything bigger than two is being multiplied by zero. So now you're getting, in this case, a, an area which is a squared is the height and the base is two minus t minus one, which is three minus t. So here's an equation for the area in this case. So now we've done our steps for three different values of t. Now importantly now, we can use these results to generalize to any value of t. So let's just think about this for a minute. This one, if the value of t that I'd chosen was negative, then there would be no overlap at all. Then when you multiply the two functions, you would get zero. So here we have zero, and that happens when t is negative. So if t is less than zero. Now we can see that this starts to happen when t is bigger than zero, but t minus one is less than zero. So t has to be bigger than zero, but t minus one has to be less than zero for this case to apply. Um, and what does that mean? Well, t minus one less than zero is, means t is less than one. Then if t is bigger than one, we get this case here where the t minus one is bigger than zero and the t uh, applies until the t gets up to two. So here we've, this applies between one to t, and then if t gets up to two, then it starts being this case over here where t is bigger than two. So this applies up to two. And then this one, you can clearly see, this one applies when there's an overlap. Well, t minus one has to be less than two. So t has to be bigger than two, and t minus one has to be less than two. So t has to be bigger than two, and it has to be, t minus one has to be less than two, so that means t has to be less than three. And then the final case, of course, is if t is bigger than that, so that this t minus one is bigger than two, then you're gonna get zero again. So when t is bigger than three, you'll get zero again. And so by picking particular values of t you, and drawing them out, you can see the cases that you will need to get the complete answer. So let's just revise the steps again. Step one is to draw the functions. It's absolutely critical to do this. Step two is to draw them underneath each other as a function of tau. And to do that, you can use this technique to work out what the function is, this V function. The second one with the, with the different components in the brackets. And remembering that phrase, the thing in the brackets. Using that technique, where does the important thing go from the thing in the brackets when you're plotting it with respect to tau? That will overcome a large amount of confusion, especially if you practice that. Then step four is to multiply them together, find the area, and then step five is repeat for all different values of t. So these five steps give you a surefire method for doing any convolution, even for complex functions. So hopefully this has helped. If it has, give the video a thumbs up. It helps when you like the video. Uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos. And of course, check out the description below. You'll find a web page which has a link to a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel, including other videos showing examples of convolutions.